rundown of what, what you're running in the pack. So all of the audio, with the obvious exception of the saxophone, is coming from the synth. The synth. Yes. So, um, yeah, obviously I've got a saxophone. So, uh, to when you first asked me to play, my first thought was 20 minute saxophone setup. <laughs> but I bought some synths. So long as you had some reverb, that would be okay. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I mean, laptop is being um, a mixer. The laptop is also doing looping for the saxophone using uh, my own looping plugin, what I wrote long before I ever did any hardware. So that in itself is an expert sleepers demo. Um, but then I don't know what you can see. I've got two cases going on here. And I'll briefly, I'll just run yeah. through them. Um, so this one, I kind of feel I have to keep this one because this, this is proof that expert sleepers modules will fit in a skiff, <laughs> um, which is sometimes debated. Um, so oh, I'll just go left to right in both modules, um, both cases. So uh, top left of this one is that sound, which is intelligent microscale generating two CVs in fifths, just literally just that. Two dirt for A110 VCOs uh, into an expert sleeper's IVO filter, which if you put your name in the hat, you stand to win one off tonight. Yeah. That. Um, that's going into an expert sleeper's Beatrix phaser, which is giving it a bit of motion. Um, so that literally just sits there and does that sound. Um, uh, next up, I've got um, two Disting Mark IVs here uh, in basically Turing machine mode, so kind of clocked random CV generators, and they're going into this Disting EX, which is playing the piano sound. So it'll sit there and do that till the cows come home. So there's two. Two Turing machines um, triggered for like four against three to give you that nice rhythm. Just triggering piano samples on that disting there. Uh, next is this disting EX, which is being uh, doing the Dream Machine, which is doing that low drone thing that I started with. literally just sitting there and droning as well, which is nice. Um, Chaos Pichumi doing some LFOs, mixer. Um, in this case, um, on the left is an FH2, Expert Sleepers FH2, which is doing, is clocking everything basically. So it's clocking uh, the piano thing and all the kind of sequency stuff I was doing was um, using the arpeggiator on the FH2 driven from this MIDI keyboard to make the patterns and it was just sitting there and burping away. Um, see if you can get out of that into a whole expert sleeper's analog voice. So these are the analog modules that I released relatively recently. Um, two Amelia envelopes, one, two Lorelei VCOs, one Ivo filter, again, the Ivo filter that uh, you stand to win if you do this thing. Um, Persephone VCA, Beatrix Phaser, um, and that is doing the kind of... <laughs> analog for days. Um, and then at this end of the case I've got more distings. So um, I've got uh, a disting Mark IV here, 
which is actually me reading something from a book. But I'm not going to play it normally because it sounds awful. But if you play it backwards at a variable speed, it sounds great. Um, and the LFO for that tape kind of wobbly sound is coming from a expert sleeper's Pandora, which is actually a kind of filtery thing. But um, Ben Divkid pointed out that with the right tweaks of settings, it turned into this really weird LFO. So that's what's generating the pitch of that. Tough. Then there's another distinct EX, which is in looper mode, so that's how I was layering up the that by having it play into that and then switching to a different loop and then playing another loop so you could layer up things. And all of that is going into this last distinct EX, which is in granulator mode, uh, which is what's providing the delay. It's also providing reverb when I turn it up um, and it's also doing the granulation which um, I was doing towards the end so that was this sound. Um, and I should possibly explain how all this is actually connected through to that. So these things, these, this fader box and this keyboard are plugged into the FH2, which is driving the FH2. Um, but they're all, the FH2 is also passing that MIDI through to the select bus, to these two distinct EXs here, um, which is how I'm able to control the looper from these pads, and I'm able to control the granulator from these faders because it's kind of going through the distig and out, through the FH2 and out to the distigs. Um, and well, this could you just explain a bit about the FH2, just for anyone that doesn't know that particular module? Yeah, sure. Or your more um, common um, um, What does it do? The FH2, the FH2, the FH2 is all things to all men. Um, <laughs> basically, it is a, it's, I guess it, at heart, it's a MIDI to CV converter. Um, it will connect to, anything that speaks MIDI, so USB MIDI devices, it will plug straight into a computer, or it will connect through so it's like a synth with a MIDI output, and it will gen generate you CVs. Uh, monophonic, polyphonic, fully supports MPE and all that kind of thing. Um, but it will also sit there and generate clocks, um, which are obviously related. If there's a MIDI clock flying around, it will sync to the MIDI clock, it can sit there and generate a MIDI clock and sync everything else. Um, and it also does a, does a bunch of stuff like, um, like the arpeggio. So, maybe the, uh, let's just see what it's doing. Let me just turn that delay off. Right, so that's your that bread and butter usage. I'm pressing keys on the MIDI keyboard and it's triggering the, the notes on the synth. Um, but if I activate the arpeggiator, Um, Euclidean patterns um, and what I'm doing in this particular case is I'm using the FH2 to generate the Euclidean pattern which is then triggering its own sequencer so rather than just having a, like a constant thing like that I'm able to have a you can see the screen, which you can't from here. So if you want a, a particular demo, then come over and have a look after. Um, do, you, do you need, Oz, do you need something else to connect the MIDI to the FH2, or does it go straight No, in? literally it's just plug USB. It's just USB. From here, I've got a hub, because I've got two devices. Sure. But yeah, you just literally just plug it straight into the FH2. Um, 
or plug the FX2 into a computer or an iPad or whatever or anything you like. And then do you need to set up MIDI CCs with that keyboard to control the right thing? Yeah, so there's a whole kind of massive configuration thing because um, it's so incredibly flexible. Um, but that you can do all that. I mean, you can do it all on the menus on the thing, but you can also connect it to a computer and do it in a nice web interface. Um, can which I'm can happy I ask to show you. you were reading the arpeggio notes? You were kind of playing, but you were playing in advance of us hearing it. Um, no, well, no, I don't think, well, what you were, what? You're, is a control and not a keyboard? What I was doing, what was I doing? <laughs> um, possibly what you're, what you were experiencing there is because I had that running into the looper, um, because it was going round and round and round, it was probably a few cycles of the looper until what I just played was actually louder than what had gone before. Okay. So yeah. that might explain that. But no, as soon as you press a new thing, it'll start. So. Um, I mean, one thing you can do, you can. Um, CC you can map that basically restricts the arpeggiator pattern to the first few notes. So what you can, while it's running, um, if you wind that all the way down, and then I, can, I could actually start typing in a pattern, and then actually add some notes to it, and I can kind of wind that. Nope, completely separate. Completely separate. It just, almost felt like really seamlessly integrated. Kind of expected it almost to be part. But, it's just that know. everything's coming from my soul. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Transferred through the saxophone. Exactly. <laughs> no, I mean literally the saxophone is just going into the world's. In, it's not. Oh, I say the world's biggest reverb, but. <laughs> consistent stylistic choice across all of the music you make or do you ever process the sax or um, I, the acoustic instruments stay separate? Right? I, I never have um, done much of that. No, I, I, I keep them separate. I don't know why I keep them separate because I, I write tools and make things for integrating the two but yeah, for some yeah. reason I... Have you had any of the ultra moon stuff that came out recently on Sang Moons, like Black Moon no. Pills? No, it's a similar approach, but they, I think, called it Integrate, like a, a soprano sax and the electronics mm. really well. I've seen you link to it. Oh. Speaking of really good stuff, um, I've got some LPs for sale. <laughs> Which are by the pizza. So you can't fail to have noticed them. Yeah. Did our Special uh, price tonight. Yeah, LPs for sale, £15. Or. Three, three, three for forty, 40 quid, quid. Well, okay. um, which is much less than you can buy them in the shops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and while we're just talking nonsense, um, some people may or may not know that I help run a monthly night of electronic, or more or less electronic music in Edinburgh, uh, called Wave Table. Um, if anybody wants to perform, let me know. Okay. 
uh, that we are currently booking at for November next year. Um, but it's on every month. It's usually the third Thursday of the month. Uh, next month, next month, September, we've got Ian Body and Lula York coming. Um, I think there's five tickets left. So if you want to see them, jump on that. Um, but we're there every month, and there's usually something awesome. Have, um, you, have you been surprised at how how many acts there are that you can fill into that, that yeah, kind of space? Yeah, it's been I, absolutely I, I, overwhelming. I was talking earlier on, I'm quite surprised at every month at both the electronic nights we've got through here. I'm just mm. like, another one, another one. Another one. Like, I'm, I'm, I've been pleasantly surprised. I've been delighted people. because it takes all the stress out of organising an event because <laughs> there's no, never any stress about booking anybody. Yeah. We've got literally... I mean, at some point, we're going to have to take a month off and just have a rest. But at the moment, we've got book gigs booked through till like end of next year, and we've got we know who's playing at every one. So, um, yeah, it's great. Do these people approach you, or do, are you? Are well, obviously, the, seen, or yeah, at the beginning, it was us kind of finding people we knew. But yeah. now it's just yeah, people are approaching us, yeah. um, which is great. People who have played, people who have come. People who have come and will be playing soon, um, later in the year. Um, we seem to have quite a nice tie-up going on with Fraser at yeah. uh, Attack yeah. Release. As often, we seem to like somebody will come up, like make the journey and do both, uh, which is good. Um, Can I ask as well? You mentioned so. Yeah. Getting back to the synthesizer over there. You mentioned the dream <coughs> machine. What's, yeah. the, what's the dream machine? Dream machine is an algorithm on the Disting EX. What's the Disting EX? The Disting EX, does everybody know what Disting EX is? It's one of my modules that does a whole bunch of stuff, basically. It's a digital module. And the Dream Machine was based, it's a kind of playground for exploring just intonation drones. Um, if you've ever heard of a chap called Lamont Young, um, he liked to set up pieces that lasted for days with basically a single drone. So basically, rather than like choosing what notes you want to play, you choose a set of prime numbers and then how those are going to be combined into integer ratios. Um, and you get, you get drones. Um, the one, let me set up, actually, if I reset, well, uh, no, that one. If I reset to the defaults, the defaults for this um, algorithm are Lamont Young's preferred prime numbers of 2, 3, 7, and 31. So that gives you
check, so I don't expect. <laughs> um, yeah. And so how many? So how many algorithms on the Destiny X now that are dual are not? Sorry, are the single mode algorithms? How so many? Of them? I guess fill in for people. <coughs> okay. Who might not know. Right. So the Destiny X is the successor to the Destiny Mark IV, which came before it, which is I have a few of over here, which has like a hundred different functions. Yeah. So all those are in the Disting EX, but then it's also got these slightly more elaborate things that take over the whole machine, um, some of which you've heard tonight. So there's, oh, this has got a beta firmware in it. <laughs> so in this firmware, there's 25 <coughs> algorithms, but there's actually only 23. Um, I have got my installed that. Um, that's interesting. Right, so um, yeah, so it does it does like the sample playback, like you've heard the piano thing there. It's got some polysynths, it's got the dream machine, it's got the looper that you heard it doing. This is all the same module, literally the set of one module and you switch it to do the, these different things. And the granulator is a different different mode of the same module. Um, and recently this module got some um, I took some of the mutable instruments, open source firmwares and put that into it as well. So that module will now be four braids or four plats or one rings. Um, and there's a whole, but it's basically a DX7 mode where it, it uses the poly, uh, the FM algorithm from plats and turns and basically re-instantiates it as a DX7. So you can, it actually loads DX7 ROMs. Um, you can play that with your modular. You have any plans to make more mutable stuff in there? Or? No, I, I could. I just go on forever. Yeah. But um, what there is an open source framework for the disting. Okay. Um, so other people can can do that if they want. But I'm I'm kind of done with that. I feel like I've taken that as far as I want to take it. Um, so I'm more excited about some of the things I'm uh, doing that are original which are accidentally installed on this module here. Um, <laughs> so ignore those if you ever come to flick through the menus. Um, how, so how does the process for, like how does the selection process for what makes it as a Destiny X algorithm work? How excited am I right. to buy it? Or how many people are currently clamoring for it? <laughs> That's the secondary concern. But it's um, not yeah, driven by a technical desire to do something or a practical desire to do something. Um, do you get excited by, we've got an algorithm in there and we feed some audio into it and you're like, yes, this is, this is shit hot? Or is it more technical, like, I really want to do this? It can be a challenge. It, I mean, the fundamental motivation for any of this stuff existing in the first place is that I quite like making music. So. And did making music come first or did programming come first? <laughs> What, what? <laughs> How far back are we going? Like, yeah. as far back as <laughs> like. I had a computer. I had a computer before I had a synthesizer. Okay. But this was in 1981, so it wasn't all that as a computer. So I don't know. I just, I'm just one of these technically minded nerd geek people, I guess. I? <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I. I I jumped on computers as soon as they were readily available. I jumped on synthesizers as soon as my school got one, actually. That was kind of my interest. It? it was a... What was it? It was a Yamaha. They had a Yamaha sequencer, QQ something. One of those little kind of desktop format MIDI sequencers. And what was the synth they had? It wasn't a DX7. It was, it was less, less good than that. 21 or 27? Might have been a 21. Um, yeah, so that was great. And then they, that was, it was a good time to be buying synths. So like they very rapidly got a, um, what's the rack mount? Roland uh, thing. Still yeah. contemporary with the M1, but the Roland thing, what? Uh, no, no, before that. Uh, D550? Yeah, D510? I always say 550. Yeah. Anyway, it's one of these one, wonderful ones where if you press the right button, it went to demo mode and played Flight of the Bumblebee. <laughs> Brilliant. So yeah, um, yeah, it was a long time ago. But um, this whole analog lark is, is a bit more recent, oddly. Yeah, but in terms of what goes into the disc thing, yeah, sometimes it's like a technical challenge. Like one of the things I'm putting in 
secretly, is um, definitely about learning to use a particular bit of technology, but sometimes it's like I would really like to have when I'm performing a granulator or whatever. Um, and the FH2 in particular, that has become the kind of nerve center for everything I do, which is what I'm always stuffing features into like the arpeggiator and things like that because it, uh, you know, so you're noodling away and if only it did this and the joy of being in charge of it is that I can make it do that, I guess. For your live performances, what's the what's the point where you think, right, this is ready? Like, do you... Is it time to come and play the gig? Yeah, but what gives <laughs> you the confidence to think, right, I'm ready to do this now? Like, do, do you just, are you working over different sections a lot or have you just got the, a rough idea of how it's going to be? I just had a rough idea. Right. I mean, that was, that was just a, a few kind of ideas thrown uh -huh. one after the other, really. Okay. Um, I don't know. I, I don't. I try not to do too many solo performances. Mm -hmm. I'd much rather play with somebody and play off them. What's the difference for like for, for you? It takes all the stress off. Because if it's just me, it's just me. Um, so but if I'm playing with somebody and I just like need to take a moment, yeah, probably some sound will continue to happen. Am I right in thinking that this, the solo records, like yeah. those records, yeah, that's your first solo. Or is or did you do? Yeah, it's a recorded solo work that exists. There's recorded solo the work that exists. I mean, if I could find it back to like 1980 something. Okay. But most of my adult life, I've been releasing music in a band by the name of Darkroom, um, who you might want to look up. Um, but having moved to Scotland and now being 400 miles away from the other half of Darkroom. Um, some solo material was indicated. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. So th those three albums are my solo output to date, which isn't many albums for somebody of my age. But I was otherwise engaged. Um, but there, I mean, two or two of those are kind of big studio projects of multiple layers of everything and painstakingly edited. And the other one is basically live recording. And which, which, which one do we have to go with? <laughs> no, it says as much on the line. Like the, the, the four drones one yeah. is, is basically performances captured. Um, and you can actually watch me play them on YouTube. Like literally the recordings that are on the LP. Like, so myself, were they live recordings from Wavetable? Or no, from, home, from, from, from me at home. Right, okay. Yeah, just, it was kind of, well, no, it was, it was just about post-COVID, so I was thinking, I need a set to go out and play. Let's write one. Um, so yeah, that's what that is. But the other two were, yeah, I think they were never performed those, ever. Um, any more questions or general questions or anything that won't be answered best by people coming up and getting very close to the screens? In which case, oh, Rafa, why don't we move to the exciting yeah, and analog modules that are planned as well? Or? Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Right, so analog modules. Um, can't remember how many are there now. Basically, you know, they're, they're named after the tracks of a certain album, right? So when I hit the last track of that album, you'll, you'll know I'm done. All right. Um, <laughs> so there's the ones you see here, there's uh, one more that isn't in here, there's one that's coming out next month. Fingers yeah, crossed? Yeah, fingers crossed. One due out mid September. Mid September for the next one. And then I've got one in very advanced prototype and one breadboard. Um, and then, yeah, that'll be, that'll be that set of names used up. So I'll have to think of another way to name them all and stop. But yeah. Um, Has anyone spotted the album that they've named after? What? Yeah, what's the naming convention of the modules? It's, it's the treasure name you mentioned. Is it Cocteau Twins album, Treasure? Oh, all right. There we go. One, one of my favourite <laughs> albums of all time. Um, I'm not taking out people that we don't like. <laughs> <laughs> taking out people that like. Bits of paper. Are we going to do this? Are you going to just draw us? Almost it.
Thank you. 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 Thank you.